This is a video of how we modify servos to be used in an Antweight robot. The servos are used for the drives of the robots to drive the wheels. There's a little Antweight fighting robot. And I'm going to make this video uh, presuming that you don't know anything about servos. So what is a servo? This is a little servo they use for remote control vehicles anything cars, planes, helicopters, boats, whatever and it's basically a little motor and a gearbox a sensor inside that measures the position of the, the output and a little PCB to control everything they connect up to a standard radio receiver which is connected which is controlled by the uh, radio transmitter and the idea is if I turn it on, is that the servo follows precisely what you do on the stick. So if I move the stick one way, the output of the servo will follow the movement of the stick. You can see that. So the idea is that the servo will be used to control anything on a like remote control car will be used to control the steering or the accelerator, a model aeroplane will control the control surfaces of the aircraft, helicopter will control the swash plate, and the boat can control rudder, anything you want, anything that needs to move, you can connect the servo up to it, whatever you do on the radio will be done on the servo. For what we're doing, we want the output to of the servo to go continuously to drive a wheel. The reason why we use the servos is a little servo like this, weighs 9 grams, and they only cost a couple of dollars each. They all come out of a factories in China, and they pop them out a million at a time, a couple of dollars each. And you get a nice little motor, gearbox, and a PCB all together. But to get them to run continuously, we need to modify them, and so that's what this video is about. So. Itself. You take the control horn off. What you have with your servo is, as I said, there's a motor inside and the gearbox on top. The case is made up of three parts part holding the gearbox together, the central part, and a lower part for the PCB. And for most servos, they're held together with four screws. And you need a little jeweler's screwdriver to open it up. So we'll just pop these out. And you can remove these stickers. And the bottom of the survey will come off. And inside we have a little PCB, which can be gently pulled out. And a whole mess of wires. Sorry, my camera's not focusing. Now, when pulling apart the survey, you need to be careful to just take off the bottom and not the top piece with the gearbox. Now, if you accidentally get that off, all these gears might come out and you're going to lose them. They're going to be real difficult to put back in if you've never seen one before. So inside, as I said, there's a motor and a potentiometer that measures the position of the output. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this sensor and replace it with two resistors. 
so that the servo constantly thinks that it's in its central position and we'll be then trying to drive the output continuously to move but we're going to trick it into thinking it's always in the one spot so the first thing we need to do is to remove these three wires from the potentiometer. Now what we need to do is remember exactly which wire went where. Very very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two resistors. Now these resistors are 2.2k resistors, 2.2k resistors. That is red, red, black, brown, and they're 1% resistors. Together, they're going to come close to 5,000 ohms, 5K, which is the same as the pot inside, the 5K pot. So, to make our little dummy potentiometer, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two resistors side by side, and I'll just twist the legs on one side together. like that and then I solder just stick them down there is we'll just solder the twisted legs together like that really sorry that my camera doesn't focus this closely okay so we have two resistors twisted together and soldered and then I take cutters, trim most of that off. And then we take the other two and I fold them back down each side. Like that. Cut them to the same length. Like that. And again. We'll just put a bit of solder on each of those. I'm not going to explain how to do soldering in this video. If you don't know how to do soldering, I'm afraid you're going to have to look that somewhere else. Okay, so this is going to be the replacement for the potentiometer inside the servo. It's going to be so we're going to have a fixed value, and this is going to trick the servo into thinking it's constantly in its center position. So. To avoid getting these wires mixed up, we're going to do them one at a time. We'll take the soldering iron, we'll take one off here, and again, stick it down. It's already nice and tinned already, so this is going to be easy. And we solder that onto one side. And again the same, we'll do the center. Yeah, no, I've lost. Center wire. And finally the other one. Now the three wires in the same order, instead of connecting to the potentiometer, connected to two resistors. Now the leads of the potentiometer, they're sticking up, they're in the way. You can either get in there with a pair of cutters and get rid of them. Or, if like me, you don't have the cutters that fit, you just bend them out of the way. We don't need them anymore. So they're all the way out of the way. Okay. Now, on most servos, not all of them, but most servos, inside the gearbox, oh, by the way, when you take off the top, it's easier to put your finger on the top of the output while lifting up the plastic cover, that way you don't pull any of the gears off. 
Now, on the final stage of the gearbox, they usually put this little knob sticking down to prevent the servo from rotating continuously. That's a safety thing they put in there. They don't want the servos to rotate continuously, but we do, so you take a nice pair of cutters, go in with your finger on top to prevent things from falling apart, just cut it all out, get rid of it. We don't want it. Gone. No more. Make sure you remove any bits of plastic. Like that. Now the gears are going to be able to rotate continuously. And we just slide the top back on. Like that. Okay. Now before we put it back together, these, these resistors are going to short out on things. So, take a little bit of tape. Non-insulating tape. Uh, Non-conductive tape. Non-insulating. That's not going to work, is it? Non-conductive tape. A little bit. Of, any tape will do. We're just going to wrap them up. Electrical tape, sticky tape, cello tape, any tape, captain tape, doesn't matter, as long as it doesn't conduct electricity, so we just tuck those, our two little resistors covered with tape inside, push the all these wires back in with the PCB on top it should all fit put the little plastic cap back on make sure we're not pinching any of the wires and our four screws Okay, I'll just put our top back on, the control horn, so we can see it move. I'll just plug it in. Okay, now because the resistors are not exactly the right value, same value, they're a little bit different, notice that when you first turn it on, it may start turning continuously all by itself. Don't panic, just use the trim on the radio to get it to stop. Keep moving it one way. If you notice it's slowing down, you're going the right way. If it's speeding up, you're going the wrong way. And just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, until it stops. So now, when I move the stick one way, it drives away. Move the stick the other way, it's driving back again. And that all you need to do after that oops, is you take a, a wheel of some description get a bit of glue glue that on there and then you can just glue your servo onto a chassis of some description like that do that two times and you got a robot easy Okay, and if you got any questions or you need, if I need to clarify anything, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.